Tonight in Tel Aviv, images that change everything in an escalation that has already spiraled so fast. Israel's missile defense systems lighting up the sky as they try to intercept incoming Hamas rockets. 130 of them were fired from Gaza in one barrage. Flights at the international airport were urgently suspended and diverted. Hamas said it was a specific target. And on the streets, injured Israelis, which, for Israel, will move this conflict onto a different level. What's confusing is that in Israel, uh, if you guys are uh, watching the, the news from Israel, everything has happened in Gaza. All the problems. Mainly Gaza, 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 and then sometimes some terror wave in Jerusalem and the rest. But the actual problem is here. The strategic threat is from here. Intelligence indicates that in addition to 100,000 short-range rockets, Hezbollah now has Syrian scuds that can strike 435 miles into Israeli territory. The terror group even allegedly has several kinds of ballistic missiles with 155-mile ranges, and Iranian zilzals capable of striking 124 miles away. This deadly arsenal is stashed just over Israel's northern border, and it's making defense officials very nervous. As an organization right now in Israel, one of our priorities is to understand the road ahead in terms of Israel's security, and then to respond based on the realities and to begin to set in place a broad-scale strategy that is going to serve Israel and serve specifically northern Israel on, on the Lebanese and Syrian borders in the time of conflict and war for the preservation of life in the, mix, in the midst of the next round of hostilities. The first phase of that broad campaign that's going to be many years ahead of us, that's going to have many facets and expressions, the first phase of it is what we're calling the bomb shelter campaign. This is, at its core, at the most simple level, is rehabilitating residential private bomb shelters in the city of Kirich Mona, which will be the center of the next round of rocket and missile fire from Lebanon and from Syria. Shmel. كله في دائرة نيراننا من وين مكان من أي بقعة في لبنان نحن نستطيع هذا الشمال وقد ما بدون زمن وكل المعلومات عن كل الأهداف هون العسكرية والأمنية والتكنولوجية والاقتصادية والصناعية و و و و كل هذا موجود We are going to get the bloody nose and people up north are going to suffer the most on this so uh, one should expect uh, even weeks of uh, sitting under fire for the uh, uh, citizens, for the civilians, and uh, a lot of hard work for the armed forces. These mountains and that mountains, everything is located. Uh, the missiles that will threat on Kiryachmona. The, the weapons transfers that we're looking at so far are the SA-17, you're talking about the uh, Fatah 110, surface-to-surface -surface missile that can reach basically all of Israel, and the uh, surface-to-ship anti-ship missile, which can basically take out any Israeli ship patrolling the Mediterranean off the coast of Lebanon. This area here is where all the weapons are, and so the area down here is the place that's going to get hammered when everything begins to go down. That's going to bear the heaviest brunt in the next war that is mounting on the horizon. The next war will be much, uh, much uh, larger. So 2006 could be described as the preview. It's going to be probably 10 times uh, more uh, intensive. In, uh, in the firepower, in the breadth of uh, fire uh, coverage of Israel. It's not going to be just uh, uh, centered on the north, but it will be focused on the north and expanding all the way uh, uh, to here, where we sit uh, now. <laughs> How does it look 
when uh, artillery and rocket artillery and missiles just pounce and, and uh, pound on uh, populated areas like Mariupol or uh, Kherson or other places in, in, uh, in the Ukraine. And you can already understand how uh, some of our uh, uh, towns may look uh, when Hezbollah uh, focuses their firepower on this populated area. We can manage Gaza. We have the Iron Dome. It's not a big place. We have good intel. Hezbollah, it's another ball game. It's Iran supported, it's strategic weapon from Iran, and it's the, the scale of missiles and the amount is... And when the storm will start here, it will come big time, big time, in a scale that will, I think will surprise everybody. Our DNA as an organization since the beginning has been really rooted in engaging in conflict zones, which has meant over the years that we find ourselves in proximity to war. Now most of the time it's engaged in the middle of the conflict, like in, in the war. Now what's unique about the situation that we're in now is that right now there's no war on Israel's northern border, but there's about to be. And because war is coming, we have an opportunity to do something that we haven't had the opportunity to do as an organization since the beginning, which is to engage in a preemptive way to save lives before the war. Now, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be able to save lives and preserve life and blood in the midst of conflict, but it's another thing to be able to actually have an opportunity in a meaningful way that is actually going to save lives when the missiles start raining down on the communities that are just behind us over here. העיר קריית שמונה היא העיר המופגזת ביותר בעולם לאחר קוסובו, והיא מקום ראשון בעולם לאורך שנות הלחימה שלה. מזה כ-36 שנה שקריית שמונה מופגזת באופן תדיר, ומעת לעת גם סובלת מחדירות של מחבלים וגורמים עוינים לשטחנו. המקלטים האלה לרוב אינם מתוחזקים במצב כשירות. אנחנו יכולים למצוא הרבה פעמים ששכנים השתלטו עליהם והפכו אותם למחסנים, או אפילו שלא היה את הכסף לשלם את חשבונות החשמל והמים, והמקלט פשוט מנותק מחשמל ומים, ולא נמצא במצב שראוי לשימוש של בני אדם. And I'm going to show you today how a legit and a good bomb shelter should look like. So let's go inside, Benny. Thank you. All over Kirchmana is low-income neighborhoods like this, where there are civilian bomb shelters that are not run by the city council. The ones that are run by the city council are managed very well, but ones like this are not. So what we're going to do now is go down and see the difference between the ones that are run by the municipality and the ones that are not. So in Kirachmana we have like 190 public bomb shelters like that, that are very good. And in addition we have 234 uh, private bomb shelters, uh, which are uh, for like uh, 10 families, 20 families. In buildings we will see, which are, you will see by your own eyes, it's so, it's, it's horrible. Uh, I will not put the dog there. So this is the entrance to one of the non-municipality-run bomb shelters. There's this is how a bomb shelter needs to look like, right? 150 people can stay here and should and will stay here during war. So 
imagine coming in here with a barrage of rocket fire and this is where you're going to spend the next few days, weeks, or months. Yeah. Here's the toilets over here. That's the bathroom. Imagine sharing this for a month with 20 families from here. Running into here and staying into here, you're going to the bathroom in here, you're eating in here, you're keeping all of your food in here, then you have to deal with the trash under rocket fire. There is air conditioning, it's clean, hot water, uh, there is internet, the uh, kids can, you know, be on Wi-Fi, which is very important during war. The power is not on, and it's not usable. So this is what it looks like without power. Now imagine the rumblings of a barrage of thousands of missiles hitting two floors above us and being crammed in here with 20 other families with one toilet and all the trash and no electricity. Imagine this feeling for days and then weeks and potentially even months. The drill is, the protocol is, we will rebuild the bomb shelters, we give the responsibility to Benny and his people. Uh, meaning the city municipality, they will own the keys and they will be responsible of taking care of the bomb shelters and open it in, in, uh, in crisis or in, when a war starts. So you guys will get the keys and you will be responsible and no one else can win it again. That's, that will be the protocol uh, for the campaign. The mayor and the head of security for Kiryat Shmona are showing us the artifacts and the evidence here at the police station of decades of war here in the north, which really drives home the fact that this city is a symbol of Israel's resistance against jihad. The sirens sounded in northern Israel. Hezbollah has claimed responsibility. I grew up in Georgia, in the United States. We are used to sirens. Our sirens mean there's a tornado coming. Israel doesn't have tornadoes, which is great, but they do have sirens, and their sirens mean something totally different. Their sirens mean that they're being targeted by enemies. We live in what is called the finger of Israel. And that little finger is surrounded. With ceasefires being on one minute and then off the next, and in the last few minutes, in fact, there's an air raid siren now. We're just going to take cover. When I was pregnant with him, we were at the doctor's office. While we were there, in the middle of the scan, the sirens went off. The whole building was kind of like, okay, what's going on? Was this pointed? Did it mean something? And you just watch everybody in the whole building scurry down towards the bomb shelter to try to find safety, unsure of what's even going on. Is this the beginning of the war? Is it not? When we all went down to try to get into the shelter, even if it was emptied out, we wouldn't have even had room for, for everyone that was there. And I looked over to my right and I saw an older woman and she has lived in Kirich Mona her whole life. It was very obvious that she was being triggered. Is this it? Is this the beginning of the next run? Is this going to be my life again? <laughs> Bomb shelters and sirens. It's important to say that there are also bases in the area of the area of the area. And many times, the area that is related to the bases is also related to the area of the area. Of course, what happens on the bases of the area, ששם זה נקודות אסטרטגיות לבסיסי צבא, ומה שמפספס את הבסיסים בעצם נופל על האוכלוסייה האזרחית ואת הנפלים שלהם אנחנו רואים כאן. 
to be in this valley where I go grocery shopping. Across the border, it's men and soldiers. Their target is women and children and moms going to the doctors. It's a really sobering and sad reality for that precious town. This one's got Iranian text on it. The Iranian-backed organization is not involving itself so far, but this incident serves as a reminder as to why Israel views this as the most dangerous arena.